Well, hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Good to see you. Missed everyone this morning. Happy Thursday. We're going to talk about alcoholism today. Um, I was trying to think of a good title, and I thought Thirsty Thursday is pretty grabby. I used to celebrate Thirsty Thursdays. So let's talk about it. Jason P., Valerie Nagy, Sue B., good to see you guys. Janet G., Ben Bacon Bits, Tara Smiling, how you guys doing? Sweet Liberty, Valerie, Krista Melinda, Blast from the Past, Sweet Delio, Becca Bean, Layla Bradley, happy to see everyone. Sanitarium Radio, Rihanna Miller, Dennis the Menace. Becca Jean, relate a boat. Let's go. And from Massachusetts, Scooby. Heck yeah, the gang's all here. Yeah, I thought today we'd talk about some alcoholism. Hey, Mary Jones. I thought we'd talk about some alcoholism. Um, that was something that my dad always said that wasn't uh, wasn't a, you know something that became a problem for him, and that's something that was definitely a problem for me. So I thought I could offer some unique perspectives not offered here before, at the very least. Sorry to shout. But yeah, we're going to delve. We're going to dive. Diving deep. We're going to do it. Um, and you know, I think this is really cool because not only is al alcohol um, a poison, you know, it literally is a poison, but it's wildly prevalent in today's society, um, really all over the world, quite accepted um, as a as a recreational kind of thing. Um, you know, when people experience withdrawal um, from anything that's not alcohol, let's use heroin for an example, you know, people aren't very ex accepting of that, you know, if you, you know, missed an appointment or, you know, X, Y, Z, because, you know, you didn't get your dope fix. Not many people are going to understand that, you know, that's not going to be a really great excuse, but you know, if you were hung over, you know, you had a little bit too much to drink last night, people are going to laugh about that. It's like that. It's very, very commonplace and very misunderstood. Um, and for those of us that have, you know, this disease called alcoholism, um, it's quite different, I think, as well than it is for most people. So, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Jason P., I have been drug-free 24 years. Still drink. I'm glad you've been sober for 24 years, my man. Congratulations. You know, if drink isn't your... Isn't your uh, you know, isn't an issue. It isn't an issue. Whatever. I'm not here to judge you. Um, I think that's that's crazy, dude. 24 years. That's wild. That's a whole lot of time. I feel like I need to be higher up. Let's try this. I need a giant captain's chair. That's definitely coming in the future. I can't wait for the giant captain's chair. Moni 69, Barbie. Crazy Girl, Miss Sunrise Dawn, West Coast Fancy Nancy. Good to see you guys. Squirrel Girl. Yeah, alcohol is very bad for every part of the body. We are going to get into that. Um, I haven't drank since March 20th of last year, says Becca Jean. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 1,000 days. I like might count days just so I can say a thousand. And that's a big deal. Look at all look at all the sobriety we've gotten here. Saw something else up here. Where'd it go? Yes. Very bad for every part of the body, and we're gonna get into that. Squirrel Girl says she recently learned about this the hard way, climbing back out now. Well, you're in the right place. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. Hey, Heifer. Good to see you. October 18th, 2020. My sobriety date is 
February 24th, 2023. Well, Jason, I'd say you're in the right place, brother. I support you. Kafik got the backs. Yeah, so we've got some alcoholics in the room. This is great. This is absolutely wonderful. So quite relevant. So, you know, and there's probably the nature of it being so commonplace and accepted and misunderstood you might not even know that you are an alcoholic. You know, you might not even know that this is a disease. Um, you know, it's so accepted in society that, you know, no one's going to tell you unless they've lived this, right? And if you're wondering, if you're wondering whether or not um, drinking is an issue for you or not, like if it's a question, I would probably address the question, you know? And um, there are a bunch of really obvious signs um, that you can ask yourself. You can ask yourself, you know, do I, am I drinking alone? That's not like a sure, you know, if you've got two or three of these that I'm going to go over, um, you probably should evaluate, you know, what's going on. But, uh, you know, if you, if you're just, if you just have one of these, it's probably not a big deal. But drinking alone is a big one. I didn't ever drink alone until a certain, like a certain point. It was always very social for me. You know, when I first started drinking, it was uh, made me feel all right, you know, in my skin. It definitely got me out of my shell. Um, and when I was when I was younger, I definitely had a, a hard time. Um, and it wasn't that I wasn't a good communicator. It was like I had like anxiety or I was like scared. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but um, alcohol took that away. And then I was just off to the races, you know? So are you drinking alone? That's definitely another stage, right? That's definitely a different level of drinking. Are you building a tolerance? Do you have to drink more to, to get to the same place than you used to? What's going on, Lord Kiss Freak? Good to see you. Good for you, Jemiah. Yeah, there was definitely a point where hangovers were much, much different. I didn't get a hangover for the first, I want to say a couple years. Um, I was in Chicago. I remember the day I got my first hangover. I like woke up to my buddy calling me on, on the phone. Um, and I like ran outside to ha have a private conversation with him because we were supposed to be playing guitar together later. And uh, I ran outside to take the phone call and the sun just hit me in the face, about knocked me over. Um, I'll never forget that. It was the day after New Year's, so I guess January 1st, I remember because my uncle had fallen asleep with a, a half a bottle of wine in his hand, like in his hand. I was like, sweet, that's for me. Degenerate 17-year-old activity. That was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, so I had, a, I had a problem pretty quick, you know? I was willing to steal and lie right out the gate, it seems. By the time I by the time I was a senior in high school, I think it, I was pretty far gone on on the drinking at least. So it was a quick progression. Um, is so is drinking affecting your work? That's not a question. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yeah, is is alcohol affecting your work? Is it affecting your relationships? Is it affecting your life? That's a great question, right? If you're showing up late to work, if you and your spouse are fighting because of alcohol or about alcohol even, even better, I might say, you, you have a problem. You know what I mean? That's not, or maybe you need a new girlfriend. Shit, I don't know. Um <laughs> That's up to you to decide. But, um, you know, if you are curious, if you are wondering, that these, these are the questions that I would ask myself. Is it affecting my relationships? Have I tried to stop? Have I even given that a thought yet? 
And, and if I have, did it work? And if I haven't, can I, am I, are you capable? That's a big sign there too. Donna says, my dad was a social alcoholic. His biggest problem was that he would get paid on Friday and not come home until Monday. Spent the weekend gambling and drinking. Biggest issue was he spent all the money. And you know, the saddest thing about that, I think is me or that, that what those statements is I can totally see that in me. I could see myself doing just that if I hadn't gotten my crap together. I'm sorry you went through that, Donna. I'm glad you're here. The girlfriend excuse. Well, I mean, it's kind of funny, but kind of isn't too, because it's real, right? So sorry to my exes out there, you know, that could have taken that the wrong way. I didn't mean it. It's just a joke. I think uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to say that I try to have love in my heart for even my enemies. You know, if uh, like, uh, I think a, a good example of, of what I'm trying to say is I had a job once that was terrible. Um, it was very hard work. I was digging trenches for like weeks on end. And I had a boss at this job and he was so hard to work for. He was such a jerk, you know, and I will say to his credit, he did stick his neck out for me time and time again. Like he had my back, but he was hell on wheels to work for it. And I told my dad about it once. And um, he told me, you know what, son, pray, pray for, pray for him. Cause if everything was right in his world, he wouldn't be acting like that. And that really struck me. That really struck me. He was basically saying, everybody's doing their best. You know what I mean? Everybody's like, we're all doing our best out here. So if, if, uh, if it's coming across crappy, you know, he's probably got something going on in his life, you know? So I try to have love in my heart and that brings me back to the exes. I'm never trying to um, take shots at my exes. I, it's not, it's not what I do. Um, got love in the heart, you know, and that's how we move forward. That's how we better ourselves. In my opinion. I saw seventh son in here somewhere. What's going on, brother, brother, brother. Bless them and change me. I like that a lot. That's going to be my new mantra in those moments for sure. So have you tried stopping? Can you? Do you get cravings? So let's say you were drinking, you know, a few days ago, yesterday, whatever. Are you craving it today? Are you thinking about it obsessively, you know? That's a good, that's probably a good sign. Are you experiencing withdrawals? If you have this, you definitely have a, a physical dependency at the very least, right? Because that's what withdrawal is, is your body not having what it needs or whatever, I guess. It's, I don't, I'm going to say that unintelligently, but yeah, withdrawal is, is what happens when you have physical dependence, right? So are you shaking? Not, are you getting nausea and vomiting in the morning, right? When you wake up? Tremors? Just involuntary shaking. I never got the shakes, but I've seen it and it is scary, which is not to be confused with delirium tremens. That's that's different. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, alcohol abuse can get to a point where it is life threatening um, and not just and I guess we shouldn't talk about this until we talk about the effects on the body. But I mean, it can kill you like 11 11 different ways. It can kill you like 20 different ways. Um, alcohol is very bad, which is crazy because, you know, when I, my concept of alcohol versus drugs growing up, alcohol was always like, eh, whatever, you know, because everybody drinks, it's legal, you know, it's, it's in your face, it's on TV, it's at the store, everywhere you go. Um, so I never really considered it to be a really bad drug or a really bad substance, but damn, it is a, among the worst. It is among the worst as far as what it does to the body and what it does to the mind. And, and um, there are only a handful of withdrawals that can kill you. Uh, benzodiazepines is one of them. Alcohol is one of them. Um, I don't, I'm not going to list all of them, right? But, you know, it's not a common thing for withdrawal to be potentially fatal. Uh, so for that reason, the ones that are 
they take very seriously. That's why when, when we talk about quitting alcohol, cold Turkey, you don't want to do that. You want to seek medical attention, especially if you are physically dependent, if you're going to experience withdrawals, if you're going to get tremors and possibly delirium tremens, your life is in danger. You need to go detox under the care of a medical professional. Um, so I also want to say that that's very, very important. I'm not a medical professional. I am not a therapist. Um, I have no licensees in these areas, right? We're just talking about this. Um, but I would definitely advise seeking medical attention if you do intend to quit. Um, and, you know, if you do intend to quit, you might as well get the help anyways, right? It's probably going to be easier to quit with help of professionals than just quit by yourself. And, you know, that's I, the hardest thing I can imagine. I don't think I would have been successful alone. Um, I definitely did not seek medical attention but I, you know, I sought my, my dad's attention and uh, that was, that ended up working out for me. Not necessarily the best course of action, I guess, but are you blacking out? Are you losing spots in your memory due to drinking? Are you waking up places that are unfamiliar? That's scary. That's only happened to me a handful of times. And most of the time other substances had been involved. Um, but it, that was never, um, a comforting thing. You know, it was the exact opposite. That was always a very jarring experience waking up and not recognizing your environs. Are you experiencing guilt? Do you feel guilt for drinking, for things that you did when you were drinking, for things that you said, you know, how are you when you drink? Are you angry? Are is there violence? Is there anger? Is, is the, are you a markedly different um, countenance? You know, does it change your mood? I think that's a very, very good question as well. And, you know, there's a huge, we could go on and on, right? I think that you could probably qualify yourself pretty easily. Tara says, not anymore, though. Thank God. Tara also says that hangovers are withdrawals. Yeah, it makes you wonder why, why do we accept this as a people? Is it strictly due to lack of education, lack of knowledge? Is it because we're not informed, right? I guess a, a way to, to try that theory is it once we become informed, can we can we change our behaviors and the way that we act and the way that we treat it as, as a community, at, at least? Because um, I think we should. I think that the way the way that we treat alcohol as a society um, needs to be different needs to change, you know, I don't know what the statistics are, but alcohol is responsible for a ridiculous amount of deaths in the country. You know, and I'm not out to save the world. I'm just uh, hoping I can can help one, one or two people. You know what I mean? I know that if I didn't have resources, if I, like I said, if I had to go at this alone, it was never going to work for me. You know, so even if one one person stumbles across this video and you know, for some reason, they've never run into AA, they've never, you know, this resonates with them, then I did my job, did my job. Um, so I want to talk about how it affects the body a little bit. Um, and then, then we could fart around and discuss a little more. So the al alcohol affects, like, all your organs. It's not just bad on your liver. It's not just that it impairs, you know, your, your thought processes, your synapses. Um, it affects literally everything. Um, I, when I was doing the research on this, I, my mind was blown quite a few times in this section. I was like, wow. Um, I ended up learning quite a bit. Um, cause you know, I just, I guess I had never done this research before, which is interesting, but so the way that, the, um, 
alcohol affects your brain is it it affects the way that synapses communicate with them with each other which is that's basically saying that like your thought processes are disrupted right so if your synapses are having a hard time firing your brain is having a hard time thinking your computer is slowing down like when you go to that website that you shouldn't over and over and over on your mom's computer and you start getting viruses and whatnot and your computer starts to slow down and it takes forever to do stuff that's what it does to your brain um and it can also that's what we were talking about mood earlier it can disrupt your your mood and your coordination right it will disrupt your your coordination um, but it also has a market effect on mood in some individuals We should talk about wet brain too here. Hold on. I remember learning about wet brain and, and like thinking to myself, that's never going to happen to me. I'm never going to allow that to happen. That's never going to be my reality. Screw that. Like that was my initial reaction, right? I'm lucky I don't have more lasting damage, I feel like. I think I count myself very, very fortunate um, with the amount of, of partying that I did and, and um, the diverse uh, 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 array of substances that I was involved with. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I could, I could be much worse off. All right, I'm not gonna go off half cocked on um, wet brain. We'll talk about that another day, I guess. Whatever, whatever, letting it go. So it also affects your heart quite, quite a bit. I've been um, doing a lot of research on heart stuff lately because I've been experiencing pain in my heart. And I don't know if it's like, if, if I'm like miss reading like sore muscles, if, uh, if it's just in my head, because sometimes that happens, or like if the, before I've done damage to my heart, you know what I mean? I need to go to the doctor and get it checked out, but I've been doing lots of research on the heart stuff because, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot and the, what alcohol does to your heart also, um, blew me away. There's this thing called cardiomyopathy. I probably said that wrong, which is basically stretching and drooping of the heart muscle. So it, it's like, it, it ages your heart. It sounds like your heart gets old and old and saggy. That sounds terrible. And my heart's like responsible for keeping me alive. And I'm just, uh, I'm just putting alcohol on it. You know what I mean? Probably not good. Um, it can also lead to stroke and high blood pressure. I wonder what my blood pressure is. It's probably fine. I'm pretty healthy, but dude, I like, I definitely have the propensity to be a little, um, hypochondriac about things, especially like looking back on, on, on my addiction and in my use. Um, it's really easy to think, man, there could be a lot of things wrong with me, right? So I guess I'm going to graze over the heart. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, it doesn't hurt to get checked. That's correct. Um, cirrhosis of the liver is probably what most people think of when they think of disease from alcohol. Um, if you see someone with yellowing skin, um, basically their liver has failed and they have cirrhosis is what that means. Um, and your liver is responsible for filtering toxins out of the body. So if your liver is not working, that's very, very bad. That's very, very bad. I'm probably, this is probably pretty basic for a lot of people, but that's okay. Um, it's good to go over the basics. Uh, and alcoholism is like the most basic alcohol is the most basic, but also so like, like I said, misunderstood and, and, um, dangerous, absolutely dangerous. Sorry to hear that, Ben. Heart goes out to your family, man. That's interesting you bring that up, Patty Joyce. Patty Joyce says, do you know how alcohol versus opiates differ or are similar when it comes to cravings? Do you think one is worse than the other? I don't have an experience with opiate cravings, but I do have a, a, a very, very close friend um, who is an ex-heroin addict. Um, and when we met, she was sober, but then we started drinking. Like, so we, we, when we met, we went to meetings together and we worked together and we ended up moving in together. Um, 
But through the time that we knew each other, we started drinking and that led him back to heroin. And I don't know, it probably wasn't a direct, you know, like, but um, he definitely ended up using in that house. Um, not long after the alcohol, I imagine. So as far as how the cravings differ, I can't personally speak on that because I don't have experience with opiate cravings. But um, I can tell you what alcohol cravings are like. And for me personally, um, it was a thought, a desire. Um, it always started in, in my head for sure. Um, even if I was experiencing some withdrawals, um, my brain knew, like I knew that I could have a beer or have a couple drinks and I would feel better. So often, the cravings would just be that knowledge, right? I don't know. I feel like it was always mental. It was never, there was never like a, hmm. I don't know. I'm going to ask my dad about that though. He might have some better insight. Alcohol withdrawal can kill you. Um, and from what I understand, opiate withdrawals are also potentially fatal. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're also potentially fatal. Sorry, I'm quiet. Everyone has such interesting things to say. Hey there, SB. I'm glad you uh, stopped by. Um, yeah, I uh, don't imagine we'll have famous last words. <laughs> I don't imagine we'll have internet issues two mornings in a row is what I was going to say. So hope to see you in the morning. Damn, Jason P. Jason says, when I was drinking heavily, I had an enlarged liver, fatty liver, high triglycerides, and high blood pressure. All better now that I've slowed way down. Brother, I'm so glad to hear, happy to hear that. Um, yeah, that's a list. I am so happy to hear that you're doing better. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, I was going to say. Your body deserves better than that, man. I'm sorry to hear that, Jason. I was also reading about this Korsakoff's alcohol dementia is called Korsakoff's people who drink and could possibly could possibly a history of varicose veins can develop these in your throat and also to your gut. It can cause a variety of cancers or I was almost I was almost down to the bottom of that. Um, yes, yeah, cirrhosis, hepatitis, fibrosis, fatty liver. Um, I guess your pancreas helps with digestion. Uh, it can impair di digestion. That might be what's going on with my stomach. It might just be left over from alcohol. It's a thought I had for the first time today. Um, so gener generalizing, but what, it do what alcohol does to your pancreas is it causes it to produce toxins that can cause a number of issues. Um, and it also, where did that go? Causes a number of cancers. I'm not going to um, list them all, but some that stood out to me were like head and neck cancer. So like larynx, pharynx and like mouth gum kind of stuff, esophageal cancers. Like, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds terrible to me in my throat, in my mouth, like in my glands up in here. Like I'm super, I'm super down to not have that ever happen to me. I would like, I would like it if that never happened to me. Um, just sounds terrible. It's another makes me think of cigarettes. Um, I used to be a heavy, heavy smoker and I'm so count myself so grateful that I, uh, quit doing that because I, I ran into some people actually in the 12 step program that were like bad off with the cigarettes. I hope they're doing all right today, but like I had, uh, there was one guy in particular and I, I stayed the night at his house once and he was just like, would wake up in the middle of the night hacking and just hacking and just like, he couldn't breathe. And then he would get out of bed 
after coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing and just not being able to breathe, would sit down at the kitchen table, get up and like kind of like, oh, you know, walk to the kitchen table and have a cigarette. I was like, oh my gosh, this cannot be my future. And that was the essence of the first desire to, uh, to quit right there. Alcohol, cigarettes, all these things that we consider so basic are so freaking bad for us. Me too. I still, when I smell cigarettes, Kristen says that cigarettes were my first love. And it was quite a bad relationship. When I, when I smell them, I still, to this day, I'm like, oof, I still like it. I still like it. Well, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? It seems like uh, there's a lot of you out there that are already walking this path, which is really cool. Do y'all feel like you still have, um, like, is there still a fear there? Right? Which, you know, maybe that's a healthy fear. I don't know. Just objectively, is there still like a fear um, of alcohol? Because I know for a long, long time, I, I would, I feared like, falling back into my addictions, you know, um, I definitely have, I definitely have that with cocaine. I haven't come to, I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable, um, really even talking about it, to be honest. Um, alcohol on the other hand, um, I can be a blessing because it is around me. You know what I mean? Like I can't avoid it in today's world. It's just inevitable. It's going to be there. Same with cigarettes. Like I, I definitely count myself grateful that I, have feel like I have that under wraps because like I would be breaking down in in smoking cigarettes and breaking down and having a drink if I didn't have that stuff under wraps because it's constantly in my face. You know what I mean? So and expensive. Yeah, I tell you what, I had to like I, I've never really had money, you know? It's definitely not been I've not been a flush individual. But even doing the math, Mischief Manager says, still smoking. Cost alone makes me feel like a fool. Even doing the math all the time, like putting it in my face, like making sure I understood exactly like how much money, like the amount of money I was spending a month on cigarettes was mind blowing. And I, like even having that information wasn't enough to stop me. It wasn't important enough, um, which is very strange. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. The mind... Sometimes I feel like my mind has to be beaten into submission. And I don't mean physically, but like I have to like really like grab the reins and be like, we're going where I want to go right now. I'm in charge, you know? Um, it's also really easy to get complacent and just kind of let my, my mind run wild, which is not what we want. Which is not what we want. Oh my, I can tell my throat's going to hurt tonight. I love sauerkraut so much. Oh, that's such a random thing to run into right there. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I am a big fan. Yeah, the healthy fear is good, Patty Joyce. Um, you cannot have courage without fear. Fear has a purpose. All your emotions have a purpose, even the negative ones. Yeah, my, my tea is all stale and old. I got to go get some new stuff on Monday. Got to go get some new stuff. I have honey. I thought about putting honey in my coffee, but I feel like it's still really acidic. I don't know if that'll be the same. I don't know. And you know, I, um, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I don't think splitting my day into two days is like really a viable lifestyle. I was thinking about it and don't, don't you need like eight hours of sleep? And if, if I'm splitting it into two four hour sections, then I'm getting one REM cycle plus an hour twice. So I'm basically netting less like, cause I, they don't, they don't add together to make th three REM cycles. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't work like that. You, I'm getting two REM cycles instead of three, basically, I guess nine hours would be three. Right. So again, I'm not a sleep expert, but maybe I should go consult one because doing a, a show 
and then doing another show in 12 hours every every 12 right um really makes for like a different um energy i feel like like i can't be high energy every 12 hours because that, that that's like right when i'm i'm losing energy does that make sense so i've been trying to think about how to fix that but tomorrow will be the third day of splitting my day in twos and i am not sure that i like it maybe i could get used to it but i feel more tired pretty like regularly decaf green tea that does sound delicious yeah i've never tried to get like split sleep into periods but i am attempting it i'm definitely uh down to try new things you know what i mean i'm not uh i'm not uh not scared at all for sure but at the same time if it uh if it's not serving i need to fix it pretty quickly because my livelihood's kind of kind of depending on it yeah tad closer together or split them like uh like five and three i was thinking something like that i still feel like that's just unrealistic nobody does that you know maybe that's for a reason How do they get the caffeine out? <laughs> I also wonder that. And what do they do with it? They probably put it into caffeine pills, right? Yeah, but that's like too much. That's way too much. I mean, maybe it's not though. I don't know. That's like exactly how much sleep I should be getting. Maybe I just need to accept the amount of sleep that I need to get. Getting, I'm getting bold in my in my sobriety. I probably should rein it in, rein it in, and just uh, do the, back to these baby steps, huh? I have heard of milk thistle supplement for um, liver support, but I have never ex done that myself. Broken up sleep is not good. That's a bummer. Yeah, Mr. Ray Ray, I can, I have the propensity to do that. But if I do, then I, I can't uh, do all the things that I need to. So unfortunately, can't do that. And I was doing, I was doing this, Casey, um, and it, um, maybe my discipline was what was actually lacking. And we should go back to that because, and yeah, Brazy Girl says keep routine. I definitely... I definitely need a routine. So I'm trying to identify what it's going to be. Um, it seems like the consensus is the broken up sleep is not the business. Hmm. Well, no point in being quiet. So, yeah. Man, life seems to be flying by. Maybe it's because I'm splitting my days into two. What an idiot, right? <laughs> um, I've been working on the Ripple stuff today. I've been working on getting my internet working today. I've been doing doing some things. Um, I've started to reach out to people on Messenger to try and get the, the Ripple stuff working, the, the time slots working. Um, it occurred to me that I am not entirely sure how to find some of you on Messenger. So I guess uh, what I'm going to do is email the people that I've been emailing and, and I don't know, figure out how to, how to communicate on Messenger because it's going to be easier and quicker to um, communicate. So I appreciate everyone's patience on that. Um, that's partly why I'm so so drained is just like trying to figure out how to how to uh, coordinate all of this. What like the best way and most effective way is to do it. And I know I had talked about restructuring mods and stuff, and I'm not in a hurry to do that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm pretty stoked on on the way these lives have been going. I'm pretty stoked on um, interaction. I'm pretty stoked on the topics that we've hit um and feedback like everything's just been pretty pretty legit pretty awesome um that makes me feel appreciated i really like that that makes me feel really good i really appreciate that 
Um, so I'm going to try and just keep it up. You know, there's all kinds of things that I want to talk about that are going to require a little bit more attention and planning than I've been able to give them like the consent thing. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of topics that I think just demand a little bit more attention. So once we get these other, these other projects knocked out, I can start, uh, I think a consent will be the first, the first big weird one we do, but I, I want to do a, a lot of, uh, out of the box ideas, I guess. Um, and I guess I can throw some other ones out there to, to tease you, but consent's one of them. Um, cancel culture and like the woke movement, I think is something that I'd like to talk about, but maybe not on this channel. Um, there's like issues that are like a product of a changing world that like we just, I feel like are slow to understand that I want to talk about, you know? But we're going to keep it recovery. We're going to keep it. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep it recovery based. So there's always going to be that. Always going to be that. Seventh says THC has kept me off alcohol. And, you know, I tell you what, if, if uh, weed is standing in. More power to you. You know, you ain't going to die from smoking weed. You know, maybe maybe it's bad for your lungs, right? Maybe you're allergic to it, right? There are circumstances that are different, right? But odds are it's better for you than whatever the heck you were doing. That's my two cents. Thank you, Barbie. I definitely feel a, a little lacking today, I guess. I don't know. So I, I really appreciate you saying that. <laughs> I really appreciate you saying that. Maybe it's, you know, every day can't be amazing, right? Because then none of them would be amazing. There wouldn't be anything to compare it to, right? Thanks for being here, Barbie. I'm glad I'm glad y'all y'all showed up. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely tired for sure. Um, and I also, we were talking about possibly reading books. I think that I gave the wrong idea. Um, I was talking a lot about the big book, but I, I don't think we can read the big book. So those of you that only heard we're reading the big book and said, I'm out, like, that's not what we're doing. We're, we're not going to be reading the big book. I'm pretty sure it's against the traditions to do so. So I was saying that we should, um, if it's a good idea, and it seems like you guys like the, the book study idea, we should pick a book that's recovery related, you know, um, and I've already had some great suggestions that I'm going to go out and grab and, 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 uh, breeze through or skim through or something. And I'll pick one, right. We can pick one together, but let's, uh, let's pick a book that's recovery related. And let's, uh, let's once a week, like go through it, read a chapter and talk about it. Um, that will help me a ton. I think I might even need that. Um, if we, if we don't do it, I might just do it and then record it. So, but I think we want to do it. So let's do it. Celestine Prophecies, I'll add that to my list for sure. Where is my list? There we go. <laughs> yes, in a book study, just not on YouTube. Yeah, um, I'm referring to, I think, I can't remember which tradition it was, but it said... Ought never be in media, TV, something, something, radio. I think this is technically television as far as like the intent behind that tradition was. So that's that. That's what I'm thinking. Time flies on the lifeboat. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Sometimes I wish it would slow down a little bit. You know, I feel like it gets away from me. I feel like my calm demeanor my i'm definitely not in a rushness sometimes uh it gets the better of me and then i yeah yeah it gets away from me so yeah we'll uh we'll get a book going i don't know what day is good for that but you know we want to get a consistent routine right now we're doing i think saturdays are fun days um i don't know I don't know. I'll talk to my, my dad and my uncle and see what days we want to do trivia and games or whatever. But we'll probably do that either Saturday or Sunday. I think try and do it every Saturday and Sunday. You know, obviously, 
we're going to swing and a miss on some eventually, but, um, and then, yeah, we'll do a book, a book study. So that leaves five days of straight recovery that aren't those two things. We uh, can probably come up with some more ideas even. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah, see, today I got, when I got up and the internet was out, I didn't go back to bed because I thought it was going to screw my, ske my schedule up. Um, but I did end up taking a nap earlier than I normally do. And it was a long nap. And I ended up getting up at like right after lunch. So this is like at the end of an eight hour stretch, basically for me. So that's why I'm a little low on, on the energies. Jeez. Yeah, woke is a waste of time, in my opinion, SG. You said it. All the tinfoil hat people are going to come out and watch that video, though. So I don't think doing the video is a waste of time. Um, there is quite, quite the theory behind the whole thing. I don't think the woke movement did anything good for anyone, regardless of what anyone may say. I don't necessarily think it's being hardcore about it, Tara. I think it's just respecting the wishes of the people that wrote that, you know? There's a ton of, I, I have respect for the 12 step program, so I'm definitely not gonna, I'm not gonna go out of my way to step on their toes or spit in their face or anything like that, you know? Um, I'm grateful for what they gave me. Yeah, mind control stuff, true to it connections. Basically, that's what I think too, yeah. Now we're talking about the woke movement again, bouncing around. You have a spaghetti strainer hat, Janet? When I say the woke movement, I just mean like woke culture. Um, it's definitely a word that's bandied around quite a bit in today today's world, at least where, where I'm at. Um, maybe you don't run into that word as much, but you know, it relates to, I don't think I'm going to say it. Um, it relates to a lot of, a lot of very con well, shouldn't, that's actually a great point. The woke movement is involved in every controversial issue this nation has experienced in the past, I want to say five years. The woke movement has been or at least had a very loud opinion about every major issue that this country's had in the past two presidencies. So I guess that's eight years. Maybe it's more like 10. But yeah, no, I'm not, I hate having political conversations because I just feel like I'm smart and everyone's dumb. Just being honest, um, you know what I mean? I, I don't think everyone's dumb, but you know what I mean? Like, it's a hard conversation for me to have, um, and I don't enjoy it. I feel like a lot of people um, probably feel the same, so it ends up being a, a super unfun conversation. So, hey, Carol, I just saw you. I'm glad you're here. So, yeah, I usually don't have those kinds of conversations. Um, so maybe I won't do that one. I don't know. It's definitely... It's definitely like on my mind, you know, it's definitely something that bothers the crap out of me. Wait, they have official YouTube channels. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to do some research on that. That is so curious. I wonder how often the traditions are brought up on those channels. What tradition was it? I 
Our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need to always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, television, and films. Oh, it's only in regards to personal anonymity. I tell you what, every time I read that book, I learn. Um, I've read that tradition like a million times. It's, uh, there's always some more stuff to grab from that book. The way it's written, um, it's a little complicated. It is a little complicated. Well, I think I think I'm gonna wrap this up, folks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I, I want I want to go get energized and come back super killer in the morning. We can have a whole lot of fun. I feel like uh, I'm a drawler. I feel like I'm a I'm a rumbler and a bumbler right now, and I don't like it. So I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> On that note, peace. Good to see you. True to it. I didn't get to say hello to you earlier. Well, in that case, Tara, that's like not. I mean, at the at the level of red press, radio, film, and television. So, I mean, again, I'm not an expert. Maybe we should consult with uh, with a meeting. I don't know Johnny's email, Sweet Liberty. I'm sorry. 56 minutes, thanks. I mean, we can hang out for five minutes if you want, Mr. Ray Ray. I might just because you said that. Thanks, Zelda. I hope so too. I think I will. I've been sleeping pretty good. It's just I've been trying to split my day into two, and I think that's a stupid idea in hindsight. I might just need to be a man and get up, you know, be energized for the second show. So. Take like a choice nap or something. We'll see. I'm just getting old. Er. <laughs> and it sucks. Yeah, that is how they used to do that, huh? Well, I'm not trying to rock the boat either because I would prefer to be able to like not dance around the subject, honestly. Um, so I don't think I'm going to bring it up to the district meeting. What if the, what if I bring it up and then it turns out it is against the traditions and then it's my fault that they don't have channels anymore. So then they're looking at my channel, like this friggin' guy, this jerk. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, here, look, Lord Kiss Freak's got Johnny's email. Here's my email. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me on my off days, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Hit the like, subscribe, and the bell for notifications. If you enjoy what we're doing here, email me with your ideas um, for books related to recovery. Sober at myyahoo.com. Um, and stay tuned for the ripples and whatnot. Uh, go check out Carol at Needing a Meeting. Go check out uh, Miss Dragon. Go check out um, Awakened by the Looking Glass. I should have a list in front of me for my sign-off. Check out all our ripples. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Anik. Yeah, I don't think so either. Noise Opera, good night. Good to see all y'all, all right? Love yourself.